There is no precise calculation for what is and is not scary. There's a good chance that none of these scenes from the last 20 years or so creeped you out at all, but they're still the best examples of how to go about filling the player with dread. They represent the genre at its most refined, often stepping away from intense gore and over-the-top violence to secure a foothold in your subconscious and refuse to let go. That's why, whether these frights still get us good or not, we can still look back and recognize which moments deserve the highest praise. The evil within is filled with a constant, palpable tension. The sense of vulnerability against overwhelming odds is a Shinji Mikami trademark, and a defining trait of the first encounter with Laura. Entering a suspiciously lit, blood-soaked room is never a good idea. After a few steps, all hell breaks loose as Lisa bursts from the floor in a fountain of blood. She chases you down a small hallway, and you have to stop and face your fears at a dead end. Before it's too late, a haunted breaks through a previously locked door, only to be obliterated. A daring chase ensues through tripwires, elevators, and spiked floors until Sebastian finally reaches freedom behind a steel door. Despite the relative safety of the moment, the image of Laura continues to haunt players through the remainder of the game. That was close. Before we crossed paths with Nemesis, Mr. X quietly stalked us through Raccoon City. While the first encounter is a tense and confusing moment during Leon's B scenario, it's not until you return to a familiar room that things get out of hand. The broadcast room plays host to a simple puzzle involving lit candles. Claire's A scenario places one lonely liquor here, so it comes as a shock when Mr. X thunderously crashes through the wall and begins slowly walking toward Leon like the Terminator. Even if you squeeze past him unscathed, he crashes through another wall and blocks your escape a second time. From this point forward, the threat of Mr. X is more intense than anything else Leon encounters. Fatal Frame has disappointingly never reached the level of recognition as other horror juggernauts like Resident Evil or Silent Hill. The series makes fear up close and personal, forcing you to snap pictures of haunting apparitions, and Fatal Frame 2 is arguably the peak of the series. One particular moment that sticks out is after a grueling battle with two twin ghosts. Instead of providing a breather, which usually happens after such encounters, the game throws a cruel jump scare at players. Just above a collectible item is a window, and those that look out come face to face with a ghost child. The best horror ensures that you never feel safe. Condemned Criminal Origins is set in rundown buildings, and the most disturbing location is Bart's department store. FBI agent Ethan Thomas winds up in the dilapidated crack den looking for a notorious serial killer known as the Matchmaker. Mannequins are packed into the cluttered environment, and some of the cracked out maniacs disguise themselves as the plastic store models, giving you the feeling that you're constantly being watched. The supposedly lifeless mannequins continue to inch closer and closer when you're not looking. Meeting a lead villain in a survival horror game is always a momentous occasion, but few baddies have such a disturbing entrance as Pyramid Head from Silent Hill 2. He enters without a bang, a subtle introduction devoid of blood spilling. He simply stands at the end of a hall, safely behind bars, watching you, a menacing warden in the fragile prison that is your soul. Then, a bit later, he forces himself on a leg monster. Silent Hill isn't just content with scaring players. The series suffocates you with paranoia. The Mirror Room from Silent Hill 3 is a prime example. Veiny streams of blood start wrapping around the room, stemming from a rusted sink in the corner. Your reflection is also engulfed, creating a sense of panic as you try to figure out what's happening. The whole sequence makes you feel helpless since none of your weapons have any effect. Before long, you weakly drop to the floor and deep red spots consume your corpse. Most scares are quick, intense moments but this sequence takes all the time it needs to agonize you. 
With its gruesome gods, alarming sanity effects, and haunting audio, Eternal Darkness can truly get under your skin. Alexandra Roivas learns of the dreadful things that have happened to her ancestors through a tome made out of human flesh, and travels to each memory to live out the terror herself. But there's no danger in her grandfather's mansion, right? As you wander the hall, solving puzzles in search of the next piece of the story, the eerie tone settles in. You hear drafts, crows, and whispers. A ghost briefly crosses your path, and a bust follows you with its gaze. Then, Alex steps into the bathroom. Not only has this specific scare been played out, so have most of the scares that were inspired by it. It's classic misdirection, but structured so elegantly that we have to admire it in the seconds before we have to run or open fire. The first monster you encounter, the hallway zombie, waits for the player around the corner of a long hallway. This pulls your focus down this later hallway, suggesting the threat will come from there. But they take advantage of the fixed camera to throw a dog in behind you, closer to your point of view than Chris or Jill. No wonder we didn't see it coming. Awakening in the dark halls of the Prussian Brennenberg Castle, players stumble through the corridors searching for clues of their past while avoiding nightmarish creatures. After creeping through the castle for a long period of time, you begin to hear strange moans. When you're finally introduced to the grotesque creature that hunts you for the rest of the game, it makes you scramble for a place to hide. This is our favorite monster reveal, affecting us more than many other graphically superior creations. Lisa, you almost gave us a heart attack, but we still love you. Most of the scares on this list can be recreated and anticipated, but it's possible to complete PT without Lisa ever getting her ectoplasmic mitts all over you. Even if you're lucky enough to get a special hug from this vengeful ghost, there aren't many indicators as to when or where it's going to happen. That's why PT's endless hallway feels like it's really haunted. There's a level of randomness and unease that's always present, no matter how many times we've been grabbed. Wait for it. Oh. Oh, maybe we already passed the part. Ah! Duh! Every time. Don Casanova spooks our staff with the trickiness of his latest Mario Maker map, Haunted Fleet, in another episode of Don's Design Lab. And now that Life is Strange has wrapped up its fifth and final chapter, the time has come to give it a score in our official review. We'll see you next week for another GT Countdown.